Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quintic equation. Now, it would be nice if we had a quintic formula, but unfortunately, it does not exist. Even the quartic formula, and cubic we talked about, but even the quartic formula is pretty complicated. There's actually a version of it which you can look up on Wikipedia. I'll show you what it looks like. Is pretty complicated. So let's take a look at the quartic formula. So this is what the quartic formula looks like, and you're only seeing part of the formula. So if I kind of scroll to the right, you'll see the whole thing. So yeah, pretty big, huh? Huge. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can solve this problem. Obviously, we don't have a formula for it, but there are ways that some quintics can be solved. There's bas basically a group of uh, quintics called solvable quintics, and that's there's a lot of theory behind it. But anyways, that's pretty complicated. So, we're going to focus on the coefficients here. Notice that 7, 1, and 8 kind of give us a clue. 7 plus 1 is equal to 8. That means the odds are equal to evens. What do I mean by e odds and evens? If you look at the powers of x, this is x to the power 1, this is x to the power 5, and this is x to the power 0. So if you group the coefficients uh, as evens and odds, then the sum in each group, you know, equals each other. So, this tells us something important, and I think we talked about this in another video, maybe a couple of videos. This means that x equals negative 1 is a solution. And that's good. And if x equals negative 1 is a solution, that means by factor theorem, or some theorem, something like that, x plus 1 is a factor. Since x plus 1 is a factor, we can go ahead and factor this equation. Let's go ahead and do that by manipulating the coefficients and terms. So I'm going to start off with 7x to the fifth power. I probably need more room. Let's start here. And then I'm going to add 7x to the fourth power so that I can take out x plus 1 as a common factor, right? Okay. This gives us 7x to the fourth multiplied by x plus 1. But I can't just add 7x to the fourth. I have to subtract it to balance the equation, but that means we do need to follow up with a negative 7x to the power 3 so that we can get the x plus 1 again, all right? But that means we have to add 7x cubed, and that requires a 7x squared to be added and then to be subtracted. And then, of course, a negative 7x needs to be added, and then we're going to have to finish this up. Uh, we do have 1x in our equation. Remember the original one? So we have to add 8x, and then the constant term is 8, which shows that what we did is correct, because x plus 1, now you can get from each group. So we're going to factor by grouping. So we're going to pair these up. And now take out 7x to the fourth times x plus 1, and then minus 7x cubed times x plus 1, plus 7x squared times x plus 1, minus 7x times x plus 1, and finally plus 8 times x plus 1. And since x plus 1 appears everywhere, we can take out x plus 1 and write this as 7x to the fourth minus 7x cubed plus 7x squared minus 7x plus 8. All right, great. What are we going to do next? Set this equal to 0. And we do know that this gives us x equals negative 1. Awesome. So we got one of the solutions, x equals negative 1. But what about the quartic, right? We do have a quartic equation which we have to solve. Or do we have to solve it? Let's go ahead and take a look at the roots of this quartic equation. As you can see here, the other roots or the, the roots of the quartic are non-real complex solutions. So they are solutions, but we're kind of looking more for real solutions and we got one solution only. So this equation, this quintic, has only one real solution. Let's go out and talk about that a little bit, why this equation has only one real solution. 
Okay, great. So let's go ahead and write our equation as a function. So we got 7x to the fifth plus x plus 8. And then I'm going to differentiate this function and find something interesting from here. We get 35x to the fourth power plus 1. Now, if I'm trying to find the critical points, I will set the derivative equal to 0. And if I solve for x, I'll get x to the fourth equals negative 1 over 35. But unfortunately, no real number raised to the fourth power is going to give us a negative answer. So this equation has no real solutions. Now, what is that supposed to mean? This function has no critical points, no maxima or minima, because the first derivative cannot equal 0. No maxima or minima. Great. What is that supposed to mean, though? Let's go back to the der derivative. The first derivative was 35 x to the fourth plus 1. And notice that this expression is always greater than 0 for all x values in the domain. Great. What is that supposed to mean? Well, the, when the first derivative is positive on a certain interval, that means the function is increasing. But this is true for all x values. Therefore, f of x is always increasing. Awesome. That's nice. You could also look at it from this perspective. When you look at the uh, function f of x, you can kind of see that if we have a positive solution, uh, it's not going to work because, you know, 7x to the fifth is going to be positive, x is going to be positive. When you add them all up, then you're going to get, uh, you're not going to get zero. But can there be a negative solution? Why can't there be a negative solution? That's a good question, right? Something to think about. But anyways, our function is always increasing, which means, which means it will intersect the x-axis only once. That means there's only going to be one real solution. And I'll show you the graph of it, so you'll see what it looks like. You could also graph it too easily, right? And here we go. Here's our function. 7x to the fifth power plus x plus 8. And as you can see here, we only got one solution, and that will be x equals negative 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. And that is going to be about comparing two numbers. That's going to be an interesting video. Anyways, be safe, take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.